Back for another relatively short video with Peter Miller. It is extremely unlikely Earth or any other planet could support complex life. Yet here we are. The odds against any one of us being here on Earth in physical form are exceptionally high. Yet again, here we are. So here's the odds. The odds against any one of us existing are 1 times 10 to the 2,685,000th power. Our universe has about 10 to the 80th atoms. So we would have to multiply that 10 to the 80th times 33,562 and change to get to 1 in 10 to the 2,685,000th power. And yet, here we are. In light of that information, how do we respond to an attempt to alleviate racism, misogyny, speciesism, and class war? These attributes have plagued every civilization so far, including this one, in part a result of civilizations requiring the ability to grow, store, and distribute grains at a large scale. But that's not all, obviously. So how can we deal with that? How can we deal with these issues that any thinking person sees around them almost every day? Racism, misogyny, speciesism, and class war. How do we deal with that? given the very limited power each of us has over anybody or anything for that matter. So take it, Peter. <laughs> yes. How will I, how can I do this one? Um, well, it's quite the Rubik. I think, uh, uh, well, to become informed, to become um, interested in understanding how, things work in human life and in human society to become, I don't know, be, to become a lifelong student is a good idea, is a good idea. I think that the more that we learn, and I experienced this in university, <clears throat> and it was more profound when I was in university because I was working much harder at being a student every day. But I mean, what you realize is, well, the more that I learn, I realize the more that I don't fully know or fully understand and um it's sort of like the lens keeps opening and getting bigger and bigger the more that i um try and um think that i know everything <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, to have that kind of a humility I, I think when you're if you lose that humility um a genuine humility like not just saying i'm humble but actually having a way to get to being humble whether it's you know through study with studying um studying in, in an environment like a university i think that's a good place to that's a good path for that but anyway once you get that a genuine sense of humility not just the words um you might approach life in a more um delicate way um not with and uh, not with i guess um an arrogance and um it, it, it's one of the hardest things for humans to, I think, one of the hardest emotions to grapple with is uncertainty or to feel out of control. So, you know, people come up with ways of explaining things that they say, this is it. You know, this is the way it is. This is this is the universe or this is society. This is how everything, you know, you just have to read my book kind of thing. Right. <laughs> and then you and well, then you'll have then you'll know for sure. And that's how we all want it to be. Right, we want simple answers to difficult questions. And there's certain people out there, certain presidential candidates that are aces at oversimplifying things. I think <laughs> I think you know you know who I'm talking about. Right? Oh yes. <laughs> but I mean, that's the Kool-Aid, right? Like, oh here, here's an oversimplified explanation that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy because it makes things seem simple and certain when they're not. Right. And I would suggest that what we can do in response to racism, misogyny, speciesism, and class war, which have plagued every civilization, you and I are not going to fix these. Not for industrial civilization. <clears throat> However, we might fix them within our own circle, within our own lives. We might make a difference for the people we spend time with at addressing those issues. Right? So the, the people in your life look to you for examples whether you know it or not, the, th the things you say have impact. They have meaning. And so let's try to be a little careful at the way we talk to and about other people. Mm. But mm. 
we, yeah. we, had, we had somebody here working doing a a, a job uh, putting in sliding glass doors on this house and i worked with him for three days side by side putting the thing together and doing this construction work seemed like a really decent person and then on his way out the door just as his way of saying goodbye he dropped the n-word i'm like you i was so stunned i couldn't even respond he just walked away got in his truck and drove away i couldn't believe it Mm, they're disappointing so out of character for this mm -hmm. individual that i just spent several days with working side by right. side yeah and then he drops this on me and and i was i was blown away i just i couldn't believe it so he's contributing to racism within this set of living arrangements mm -hmm. which is horrible well no it was a reminder for me well and he must have he probably um uh, uses that as one of his devices to, f f you know, feel more in control in of things. You know, like uh, I mean, all of the isms I think that you're talking about are they're they're oversimplified ways of viewing the world, right? Yeah, um so, so people people use them as a tool to feel more in control, mm -hmm. to feel more certain, uh, to you know, yeah, to feel comforted that way. Uh, if you really want to. If you really want to take responsibility for this, I think you have to get good at feeling feelings. And, you know, maybe, you know, a lot of the masculine or or toxic masculine stereotypes would say that's a silly thing to say. Um, but I mean, you have to ask yourself, have I, did I learn how to feel my feelings? Did I learn how to tap into that and work with them so that they don't, they don't rule me? Um as a kid growing up, I was told almost every day, you can't do that. Big boys don't cry. You know, or, that's the yeah. thing all the time. Mm -hmm. So the, you, you're trying to learn how to feel your feelings, live in your body that way, and then it gets shut down, right? And quite often people will also get, another one is they get invalidated. Like, don't feel like that. You don't need to feel like that, you know. Uh, or they or they get threatened if you feel that way or express that. There will be consequences. So, I mean, how are you ever supposed to get good at feeling feelings if you're always if they're always getting shut down? Which is one of the most common things that's happening in families everywhere as we speak. Right. And pe people do it automatically. They do it unconsciously. It becomes habit to to ignore, to become disowned from that part of ourselves. So how are we supposed to get good at feeling uncertainty and then not use all these things like misogyny and all these other things that are oversimplifications of life? <laughs> to to feel you know that feel stable these are these are i think these are the questions people need to ask like do i know how to feel my feelings did i ever learn that maybe i should talk to somebody you know <laughs> it, it reminds me of a line from a movie mm -hmm. roddy piper they live that's the name of the movie they live and he says something like Life's in heat. No, no, life's a bitch and she's in heat again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Life is difficult. Let's yes. not say that it's not difficult. And no, even, it is difficult. even if you're thinking about how not to be racist, how not, not to be misogynistic, how, how not to elevate the class war in your own neighborhood, even if you're thinking actively about those things on a regular basis, it's still not going to be easy. No. Uh, and I think I think if we want a healthy society, and I think other therapists would probably concur, like you can't force health on people. So if you need to take it upon yourself, like I'm going to have a certain self care plan that um, that nurtures these parts of my health that are that are almost always neglected in this context, the industrial capitalist cont context, it's it is almost a total disregard for mental health that's that's yeah. my that's my accumulated wisdom from what i've seen i mean after you interview people like thousands of people right like and you see the same pattern over and over like what else can I, it's like conclude it's like you looking at the evidence with you know like <laughs> what else are you supposed to conclude uh when you see this evidence how many pieces of evidence have you gathered like thousands right like, right right absolutely uh so, <laughs> take home message, at least for me, is 
responding to and alleviating racism, misogyny, speciesism, class war, which have plagued this civilization along with every other civilization before this one, is going to be a personal responsibility. We are not going to fix this set of living arrangements. It, no matter how many hammers and nails you give me, I'm not going to reconstruct this set of living arrangements and make it all better. But what we can do at the individual level is not contribute to those horrifying, horrible problems. Yes. And, and then how, what can I do to take better care of my health? What practices? Who could I talk to? What books should I read? You know, like these kinds of things. That's really taking responsibility. Because I think people like to just do lip service quite often. They say, oh, yeah, I really care about health. Right. <laughs> it's really important to me to be healthy. But then their actions don't reflect that. Right. <laughs> I have a story, but I'm not going to go on about it. Okay. personal. Um, so speaking of taking responsibility, why don't you tell us about your free online course? Yeah, my free course uh, is hosted at freebpdcourse.com. Um, it's it's um, focused on borderline personality disorder, but even if you are just suffering from regular depression or anxiety um, or, you know, like, the, the most common health issues that people face for mental health, it can still be helpful because I mean, a lot of the things that happen to us is because we didn't get the tools we needed in childhood to manage our thoughts and our emotions and to learn how to live in our bodies in healthier ways. A lot. I mean, we can manifest ill health in hundreds of ways. And sometimes we have 20 of those or 10 of them going on at the same time. Right. Um, and, uh, and borderline is one of many, and um, but lots of things can overlap with it as well. So again, it's hosted at freebpdcourse.com. All right. Thank you very much.